Now we may have just reached an apotheosis. I think Gasworks may be the best Half-Life map into Team Fortress Classic. Um, I think it actually plays better than it in its native environment. And I think that the team aspect of it actually works really well. Just due to the sheer size of the map and the way, like, you know, the, it's laid out itself with the buildings and, like, you know, the different levels of it. There's some breathing space. You can actually coordinate with people. Um, this is a hell of a time. And I've somehow never played it in, like, you know, an actual, on an actual Team Fortress Classic server, which is a real shame. Because, you know, the thing about this map is that it both has very open parts. So obviously, this would, this whole little area here is going to play really well to snipers. And any other class that can take advantage of the wide open spaces. But it's also got more closed in spots downstairs, even over here for the more closed in areas. And just the fact that there's so many little places you can hide, or even the spy, which I don't think usually works really well in these, like, playing this in, like, team deathmatch, would work, be a viable option. And to the shock of a few of you, I actually think this works great with 16 people. Oh my god! New Line Void recommending, like, you know, more than 8 people on a map? Oh, I can't believe it. But yeah, anyway, this is a great map for at least 16 people. I think it's a great number. But hell, I think even 32 people, if you're okay with more, like, you know, crazy, like, you know, stuff going on, this will work real well. Um, because that's the thing, you actually have some, like, coordination. Like, you know, it has a very complex style of map, where it's very, like, the map itself is very regimented with different tiers that you can know. You'd be able to, like, if you could hold this area really well, you can get an engineer to build teleports. And, like, you know, you can get the medics to stick around and the sniper here. Even here, you have a great place for the engineer. Not so much here, actually, despite having the pack here, because people are going to be throwing in grenades. But see, that's what I mean. It just works well, because, like, grenades work great here. And, like, you have, like, different routes to get down. So, you know, if you could be wanted to be a cunt, excuse my language, you know, you can have someone build a century here. Booby trap this area. There's just a lot of opportunities for mischief here. And that's not even getting into, like, you know... The multi-tiered areas here, like I said, with the hiding spots for the, like, you know, the spy. And, you know, stuff like that. But then you got this area, which, again, is great for snipers. But can work great with a ton of other classes, like the heavy weapons guy. You know, especially you got the sniper holding down here if you want to try to back him up. With, like, you know, the heavy weapons guy or, like, you know, more close range class. Demo man could good work good on something like, you know, the corridors. Even got teleporters here. You got the underwater section. And like I said, it's just so vast, and there's so many ways to move around the different levels that I think, like, the spy being able to sneak up on people if they're really good. Or, like, get up here and, like, you know, try to get to a sniper that's, like, holding down. Like, maybe not so much. I went the wrong way, but, like, think it's not, like, you know, classes are being annoying up here. Watch well, great. Just be a spy. Disguise down there and get the hell back up here. I can see the sniper being a little bit overpowered. Besides maybe, and the engineer with a really well-placed, like, you know, team and sentry would probably be annoying, but that's just it. This, this map, in my opinion, plays extremely well to the strengths of the Team Fortress classes in general. Hell, you even got the teleporter here. Like, look at this guy. I don't think this is that great a sniping spot, but you know what I mean? That's why I just, like, you know, he, they're trying to think outside the box. Like, I mean, he just had a sick, like, headshot there, I think. Or maybe that guy, that one guy just blew himself up, but you see what I mean. There's a lot of little areas that, you know, with a really well-coordinated team, you can actually think of some strategies, even with the random spawns. Definitely try this one out, even with a jam-packed server. I think this one's good, but I'm going to be 16 people because I'm a little bit conservative, if you will. Might as well show this in a little bit more detail here, but yeah, here's, uh, I think, Randy Ladeen? Yeah, Randy Ladeen multiplayer. Go figure. I, I think I showed that in the Half-Life video, but I figured I could show it a little bit better here. I really wish Half-Life had a spectator mode. It's a random thought, but you know, it's just, it's so helpful to look around the map sometimes without having to go into noclip and all that. This really is probably the most complicated Half-Life deathmatch map. I always think of boot camp due to its sheer size, and this might not be quite to the same level as that. But there are just so many alternate ways you can go and move around. Which is astonishing too, because it's not even a team map. This is actually designed in with um, just regular deathmatch in mind. If you recall how I, I mentioned this was at one point, Valve said this was their favorite non-team play map. And ironically, I think it's great for team play. But then again, Half-Life and Team Fortress Classic don't actually play the same way. Go figure. Yeah, see, it's nice too because it gives the heavy weapons guy in this top part here potentially a nice counter if you got a really good sniper. You can't have the heavy weapons guy, you know, dominating too much. 
Because as much as I don't, I think the classes in this game are relatively well balanced, and I like using the happy weapons guy, it does get annoying sometimes just how durable this bad boy gets. And so sometimes it, having a nice hard counter is good. That's what, like I said, watch out for even with the ran, like, you know, the, the good team play there, though. You'll see, you know, you got to be careful of the random spawn points because I just, like, mowed down that one sniper a moment ago. But, you know, that's that's kind of a flaw all these maps have. And look at this guy's right after me. I got to move. Even in this wide open area, the heavy weapons guy, or, like, this, like, lower area, you got to be careful as a heavy weapons guy. Well, these, the, both those grenade throws are incredibly embarrassing. Uh, come on, Herb. You should have known the better than me, like, there. Could have moved. You have legs. Just a random thought, too. Because, you know, I've played Heavy Weapons quite, quite a bit in this game, just because, you know, a lot of the times I'm playing these deathmatch maps recently. I actually think the double barrel shotgun or super shotgun is his most useless weapon. Not the, um... The single barrel, which a lot of people, I think, you know, discount in this game and on the other classes, too. It's not so much that it, it is weak compared to a lot of the other weapons, but you have to understand that the it's like in Quake and like a, even like, you know, a Doom, the shotguns in those games are actually better at long range than you get, you'd think they'd be. Like, they're actually semi-realistic. In real life, a shotgun is actually not, not lethal from like 50 meters away. Uh, the effective kill range of a shotgun in real life is way above how it is in a lot of like video games. Where, like, the shotgun's been, like, usually portrayed as just, like, you know, a short-wage weapon that can't do shit. Like, even, like, you know, 20 feet away. No, it's actually just like this. It, well, I got headshotted there. This thing is actually really good at long range. It takes a lot of shots, but you can constantly whittle down someone's health if you know what they're doing. And that's why I actually think it's more useful than the double barrel shotgun and the heavy weapons guy. Because there's a lot of instances where I just don't have the time... Or, like, you know, I'm too far away to effectively... Also, too, these grenade, the, like, the ladder shafts are a great place to chuck grenades. Try it. A lot of times I'm trying to move around and I don't have the time to rev up the, like, uh... Keep the minigun revved up while I'm trying to move around somewhere. So, like, the, the single player is a nice little option to, like, you know, try to keep damaging enemies while you're moving. Especially if they're farther away. Whereas a double barrel on the heavy weapons guy doesn't... It's the master of none. Because it fires slower, it has worse range. But in any instance, it, like, you know, distance where it would be become useful, you could just use the freaking, you know, minigun. It would take longer to rev up, but I guarantee you're going to kill the enemy by the time... And the time it would have taken you to start firing at the enemy with the shotgun normally, um, you know, you're going to have the minigun revved up and doing far more damage than, like, you'd ever think with, like, the minigun. It's I kind of messed up my point, but I just don't think... It's a very useful weapon on the heavy weapons guy. Though on every other class, it's a far more viable option. Doesn't help, too, that the min, like the minigun here actually uses shotgun shells as his ammo, which is a little absurd. But that's probably just a holdover from the like Quake Team Fortress days. Always a nice sense of paranoia and wondering where the hell Sniper is in this map. Really, I think even among other, like, taking actual Team Fortress Classic maps in this count, this is one of my favorite Team Fortress Classic maps. In my opinion, it just works so well with this game, even if it does got some little quirks to it. I mean, boot camp and crossfire equality, as long as the other ones like Datacore, don't get me wrong. And I think, I think I said Stockyard was pretty good too. You know, just maps like that, they're good. But there's things about them that just don't lend themselves to being as fun as the, like the, like, you know... Versus their original native environment again with the exception of like some like data core and crossfire But this one I even with how good This map is in half-life normally it just feels more organic ironically to me in team fortress classic here It's a very hard feel thing to put into words Obviously too. It's, it's kind of a cheap cheap loser strategy But you know chucking grenades into the water here might not be a bad idea if, especially if the server is really packed you might just get a lucky kill. I know that's stupid and cheap, but, you know, thought I'd mention that, too. Hey! 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 Get back here! I'm not dealing with you. Go away. I have to stop my imposter. He's sus. I'm, I'm gonna kill myself for that joke. Yeah, see, my team's smart. We got basically every class you'd want to be playing as in, like, Team Fortress Classic, like, Deathmatch here. 
I mean, we could use a spy and an engineer too, but you know, I figured if you have a more packed server, that'd probably be better. Yeah, that was smart. Again, Herb! I think I killed you in the exact same spot. You know, that time, you know, you couldn't have seen that coming as fast, but still, try something different. You know, you gotta get that headshot going fast if you wanna be, like, daring like that. I'll be sniper for the last little bit, why not? I'm not gonna do well at all, but hey. Yeah, at least I can pretend. Yep, this is about normal. Well, you know, I brought up earlier that, you know, it's weird that the, the you know, heavy weapons guys, um, minigun uses shotgun shells, but it's also weird that the, the sniper uses the shells, apparently, for his, uh, sniper here. This is a lot of weird ammo stuff in the, like, original two versions of Quake. This and Quake Team Fort. Quake. This, uh, this Team Fortress Classic and Quake Team Fortress. Well, I see Herb is nothing like Herb, an Apex Predator here. Jesus. Watch this guy kill me by the time I actually land this shot on him. Well, well, it worked out in the end, but still. I've never been a good sniper in any game. I've tried. I know it because it takes practice. That's a lot of thing, but I don't have the time to, like, you know, snipe. I think the best... The only time I could have ever been competitive, like a FPS, if you're talking, like, you know... Like, you know, in terms of, like, you know, MLG or something, is that I used to be a fuck... I've been swearing a lot of the video, I apologize. I was sick as medic though in Team Fortress 2. But that's because I knew how to move around and actually like, you know, try to keep myself protected while still being close to like, you know, the um like person I was trying to heal. You know, some people like just stand blindly next to the person that they're trying to I did I couldn't even hit I couldn't even Well, I actually hit you. Well, He's not dead yet. I, that was a headshot. He's not dead. I suck at sniper. I, I, I'm terrible. Nah, but I think I'm satisfied with my video here. Uh, so yeah, Gasworks in Team Fortress Classic. This is the definitive Team Deathmatch map that, or the to definitive. Okay, maybe not the definitive Team Fortress like Team Deathmatch maps in Team Fortress Classic, because I'm sure the communities probably made an awesome one. Like other some other awesome ones, but for like taking these from Half Life and putting them into Team Fortress Classic. I would say this is the definitive map alongside ones like Boot Camp and Crossfire. Uh, definitely give this one a shot. I highly, highly recommend it. Especially if you got some people you can coordinate really well with.